Hello beautiful people of the internet, welcome back, or if we have never met before, welcome! So glad to meet you today in this little video. If you clicked on this video, you already know that I am here to share my eco-friendly, sustainable, zero-waste hair removal routine. For those of you who have been around here for a while, you've probably heard me say that I have been on a sustainability journey for a while now. I think I started actually trying to be a more conscious consumer and more conscious of the products I was using and the waste I was creating probably in like 10th grade in high school, so it's been a minute. And when I first started out on this whole sustainability thing, I basically just looked at my life, I looked at my garbage, and I found the things that I was throwing out the most, and I was seeing what areas of my life was creating the most waste, and hair removal turned out to be one of them. And this might have been a me problem because I have very sensitive skin, and before finding this hair routine that I'm gonna share with you all, I had a gnarly time trying to stay away from razor burn. No matter how much shaving cream I put on, no matter what brand I got, no matter how slow I went with those little plastic disposable razory things, my skin did not like it. So I figured, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. My skin isn't liking this plastic creating routine anyways, so why not try some more eco-friendly alternatives? And I'm gonna share those alternatives with you in just a second, but I feel like since this is a hair removal routine, it might be suiting for us to move and relocate to my bathroom, which might be kind of weird, but let's go to the bathroom. All right, welcome to my bathroom, or at least I am sitting in the doorway of my bathroom. We got my little toilet, little sink, little shower, and everything that my little routine is compromised of. So there are two parts to this hair removal routine that I have. The first part is the shaving part, and the second part is the waxing part. And for the shaving part, I use a safety razor, and for the waxing part, I use sugar wax that I make out of water, lemon, and of course, sugar. Now I will say, I definitely try to wax over shaving, just because the waxing lasts longer, and I find it to be gentler on your skin, which might sound a little bit weird, but I just find, because of how fast hair grows back when you shave, and how often you need to shave your legs, I just find it doesn't give your skin much of a break, and I find sugaring to be very gentle on the skin. Not on the hairs, the hairs hurt, but on the skin, great. I'll also say that I never actually use my razor to shave anywhere other than my legs. Anywhere else I want to remove hair, I will wax. I feel like I'm fine to shave my legs because the hair is finer and thinner and it's not as coarse. So I don't really get ingrown hair or the kind of irritation that you get when you shave in other areas where the hair is thicker and coarser. So all that to say, I guess I pretty much only ever shave or use my safety razor when I'm too lazy to wax my legs. Other than that, I pretty much exclusively use my sugar wax other than when I'm lazy or when I don't feel like letting my leg hair grow out enough to be able to wax it off. So let's get that part of the routine out of the way. I'll show you all of my supplies that I use when I shave, AKA when I'm too lazy to wax my legs. This is what I use to shave the hair off. And I feel like this is one of the most common zero waste swaps people make when it comes to their shower routines or their hair removal routines are getting these little safety razors. And if you're unfamiliar with what these are, they're basically just a metal body that open up, screw off or open up, and they have a removable double-edged blade that you can take out and remove when it gets too dull or it's not working anymore, and then you can just replace it with a new one. And I remember when I first got this, I was a little bit scared because it looks a little more daunting than the super cushy disposable razors that you can buy. But honestly, and this might sound weird, but I have had less accidents with this than I ever did with any of the disposable razors. And I honestly just think that A, it could be because the blades are better quality so they don't catch as much. And B, these things are solid, like the body itself has weight to it. So when you're shaving, you actually don't have to push down on your leg to shave. You literally just let the weight of the razor do the work and you just pull it along your leg, which is kind of nice. So along with the razor, you do need to buy separate blades, but in this box of blades, I bought this when I first bought this razor. It has a hundred blades and they're all double-sided. So that means you essentially get 200 blades that are better quality, they're sharper, and they last longer than the disposable ones you could buy at the store. And this box was not very expensive. The actual safety razor itself, like the body part, I think mine was between like 
40 to $60, so it's a little bit of an upfront cost. But I remember when I first bought this, I did a little breakdown, a cost breakdown, and I think you pretty much pay off this razor and the blades in under a year of using it, depending on how much you shave, just because disposable razors are so stinking expensive. So definitely worth it, and it makes sense from a budget perspective as well. And finally, what I have when it comes to my little shaving routine is I have this little blade bank Basically, it's just a little container where I can put all of the used dull safety razors in so that they're not just floating around waiting for someone to cut themselves on it. And I also ordered this on Amazon forever ago. I don't even remember the brand of this safety razor, but it says Merker, M-E-R-K-U-R. So I'm sure that's the brand and I will maybe try and link whatever I can find in the description below so that you can also find it if you're interested. Now I mentioned earlier that back when I was using disposable razors, I had a heck of a time with razor burn just because my little skin is so sensitive. And I remember when I first started using the safety razor, I got significantly less razor burn. Why you may ask? I honestly think it's because the blades are a much better quality and they're so much sharper and sharper blades means they just slide across your skin they cut the hair and they don't have any like micro jaggedy edges that irritate your skin. I don't know, but even if you're someone that isn't interested in the sustainability part of hair removal, this is so nice for if you have sensitive skin. Anyways, all that to say that because of how good these are, all I use now to shave my legs when I'm too lazy to wax them is my conditioner bar that I also use for my hair. I don't even have to use shaving cream anymore. I just use this and this and my skin is happy and my skin is fine. And also another thing that I stopped doing is I stopped shaving upwards against the grain of the hair because I don't care if you can see little specklies. I do not want ingrown hairs anymore. So I shave with my leg, or I guess with the direction of the hair growth because it's just gonna grow back the next day anyways. So that's all. The safety razor body, the blades, the conditioner, and the blade bank is everything that I have for the first part of my eco-friendly hair removal situation. Now I'm getting kind of tired of sitting here, so maybe we should try and find another angle in this very small bathroom of mine to talk about the sugar wax. Okay, so we're now in my bathtub. I feel like this is a comfortable place to talk about sugar wax. It might be a little bit echoey, so I hope it's not too bad. But let me show you all of my products I use for my sugar wax. First things first, my sugar wax. I have it in this lovely little container. And basically the ratio that I use for the recipe of the sugar wax is a quarter cup of lemon juice, a quarter cup of water to one cup of sugar. I'm sorry if you can hear the music in the background. Apparently I live in a rowdy part of the city and there's just concerts all the time. Anyhow, basically when I'm making my sugar wax, I have these two candy thermometers because I lost one once, so now I have two. And I basically just boil up that mixture on like medium heat until it gets just underneath of soft crack, which is 275, 285, 285 degrees Celsius, 275 degrees Celsius, between the two of those, until I like the consistency. And basically once it gets to that temperature, I just throw it in a container and leave it sealed until it's done and then I make more. I personally like my sugar wax to be pretty hard because like I said, the only place I will shave are my legs because the hair is finer. And for coarser hair, you need harder wax to be able to actually pull it out and not hurt your skin. If you've ever sugared or you've ever waxed and you feel like you have bruised or pulled your skin, it probably means that your wax isn't hard enough. It shouldn't actually be sticky on your skin. Basically, I just like my wax so that at room temperature, it's hard, it won't move. But as soon as I heat it up and get it a little bit hot, I can spread it on my leg or wherever I need to spread it. It'll harden up and then I have all of these fabric strips that I made out of an old bed sheet or a curtain or something. So I'll put the wax on, put the strip on, and rip it off. And then once I have all these strips with a bunch of wax, I have this old pickle container and I'll put them in here with water and let them soak and then just simply rinse them off. Oh yeah, and with sugar wax, you always wanna try and go the opposite direction as the hair when you're applying and then you pull with the direction of your hair. And to apply the sugar wax, I just use a knife and then I clean it. I feel like that's kind of all I have to tell you about the sugar wax because it's such an easy, simple procedure. You make the wax, when you want to use it, you heat it up, you spread it on your leg, you put this thing on it, whoosh, then I put this in here whoosh, with water, let it sit. Once all the sugar is dissolved, I rinse it off, I dry them up, and I put them in this old Lululemon bag that I have and store it in my closet. Now let's go back to the living room and sit on something a little comfier. <clears throat> oh. 
That's better. Well, my loves, I think that's kind of all I have to say about my eco-friendly, zero-waste, sustainable hair removal routine. If you have any questions, leave them for me down in the comments. If you have any suggestions that you have learned in your own zero waste hair removal journeys, also leave those for me down in the comments. And if you ever want me to make a video to elaborate or explain further on any part of what we talked about today, also leave that for me down in the comments and I will try and make a video just for you to explain everything that I need to explain just because I love you so much and I appreciate you and all of the things. Anyhow, here are a couple of videos the YouTube algorithm thinks that you would enjoy. Thank you so much as always for spending this little chunk of your day with me here in our little corner of the internet. I hope this video finds you well. I hope you're taking care of yourself and I will see you in the next one.